Um, so, sorry. <laughs> Hey guys, it's spring. There is water, water everywhere. But let's talk about the water that we care about, the water systems in our house. We are back with Eric Bernal of Elite Water Systems. Now he's kind of like the, um, the overlord of our water. Um, you guys may remember he came out here, gave us some things. We did some testing of our water. And this gal, Ann Reynolds of Fenn. So let's dig a little deeper into what our systems actually are. So Ann, Corbett and I have a little bit of a water PTSD. Plus also water is just something that we need to be cognizant of. So this Fin product is actually going to measure the water in our home, but how does it measure it? What this does is from one spot, it's able to measure pressure, temperature, and flow 240 times a second. So it'll send you alerts if you have something as small as a 0 .003 gallon per minute leak to let you know that you've got a little thing that's brewing and could be a big thing. It'll let you know if you have abnormal water usage. So if you're using an appliance mm -hmm. longer than you normally use it, it'll send you an alert. Or and if my daughter is just constantly flushing the toilet absolutely. as a three-year-old does. I have one of those and we do call her the most common use of abnormal alerts. Uh, so her name is Busy and she definitely keeps Finn Plus busy. But what it also does is it has the ability to automatically shut off your water for you. Oh. So if you're not here and there's a catastrophic event, so a significant change in pressure or flow, it will automatically shut off that water to err on the side of protection and water conservation for you here in your house. So this gets installed where the water enters the home. If you have a PRV, it would be installed after your PRV, but it can be installed indoor or outdoor because it's military grade tested. And from that one singular point, it is protecting your entire property to ensure that the water is going where you want it to go, not where you don't want it to be. So we're testing geeks here on the show. What does military grade tested mean? Because I bet some people are just like, mm. It's military grade. Well, military grade testing is pretty rigorous testing. That means it could survive the military standards so that it could be um, used overseas, it could be deployed, it could be used in any military setting. And so if it's good enough for the troops, we believe it's good enough for everyone else's homes too. But it's been through all of the NSF certifications as well. Uh, okay. There was an independent study um, done by Utah State, which showed that this has the highest accuracy in mm. the industry in terms of being able to detect flow or leaks. And additionally, for people who live in cold weather, it actually can detect forming of ice crystals and it'll send you an alert letting you know that you're at risk of having frozen pipes. Right, so that's the temperature thing. We, we did something similar in, in the tiny lab actually with temperature gauges, but that's so cool. It's actually measuring temperature of the water, not just the air around the pipes. I love that this is making the metrics game happen in a home. We love that too. What is this um, weird blue thing? It looks sexy, it looks like it does something. Fantastic, it is actually a built-in tool. So what happens is this is installed, it needs Wi-Fi and just standard electricity. But at any given point, if you were to lose electricity, it actually is a little tool that can allow you to go in and manually turn the ball valve on or off so that you always can be controlling the water in any particular situation. And we like control. So is this connected to point of use sensors? Nope, there are no point of use sensors. So with Belkin's consumer electronics background and their machine learning scientists, we only need one spot. So you don't have to try and guess where the water is gonna leak, this will tell you. It doesn't have to be a guessing game, it can be a data game. So it feels a little bit like this machine has telepathy. <laughs> I mean, how, how can you find which sink is leaking, which toilet is leaking, constantly running? So what it is is it's data science because every appliance in a home actually has what we call a fingerprint. Oh. So it in impacts your pressure and your flow, and in some cases your temperature, differently. So that's how we're able to tell when a toilet is flushing or when it's staying open because the flapper is still running, or when a kitchen sink gets turned on versus when a powder room sink gets turned on. Right. Because we look at all of the data in the background and we've been able to create that unique fingerprint mm -hmm. and then we're able to use that and then associate it to the water events that happen. Hmm. So when you install this in your home, it comes preloaded with 10 million data points and it uses all of those data points to triangulate to make sure that we are putting your home in the safest hands possible. So Eric, we just talked about the fin, and now what is next in the water system? So now that we're receiving water from the city and it's gone through the fin system, at this point, we're, this is the point of entry systems. So we're going to remove the look bads, smell bads, and taste bads of the water. Water's gonna come through the softener, 
Uh, and this is a high efficiency unit. This is a, a Pentair Pro Elite. So just as about as smart as the fin system is. And what it's doing is measuring temperature, mm -hmm. usage, okay. and it's also measuring the constituents in the water, such as the uh, hardness minerals. So the calcium, magnesium, and iron. And what it does is it creates this equation, this logarithm, so that it understands that it's, number one, utilizing the entire media bed, mm -hmm. so that when the system needs to be uh, regenerated, uh, it's utilized the entire bed. Most water softeners in the market don't do that at all. What do they do? So they use a meter. So when water's going through, it's just a, a little flapper and it's counting water gallons. So the problem is that just like temperature changes the viscosity of water, it can absorb more if it's warmer and absorb less if it's colder. You really need more data points to fully use the filter. You have to. So even though we are in a major metro area, right. we had boil alerts, sure. which are like water advisory alerts. Um, tell me about how this system will work with those. So past the point of entry, now we're worried about what you're consuming, right? right? So when you have these boil water alerts, what we're looking for is to create a final barrier. So it's important in these boil water advisories, once the water gets to the final barrier, which we'll, we'll talk more about that in a few minutes, which is your reverse osmosis, uh, systems, we are getting down to that point zero 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 like one micron level. We're taking everything out of the water except the H2O molecule. So the water's coming in, it's, it's going through a carbon and then a softener, and so we're getting rid of the look bads and smell bads, right. and we're making the water usable for the house. Sure. Take me to the next step. Okay, now we're going to talk about the beverage and culinary experience. Here in our kitchen, it's, it's a pretty standard American kitchen, um, and we're going to have one sink. And then we've got an ice machine, which is that water going to make it over to the ice machine, and we've got a pot filler over a cooking top. Do we need multiple systems? So really, it's two things. Number one, we need one purification system okay. that uh, has enough capacity in the holding tank when we separate the H2O molecule from all the other stuff, right? Split the lines and you have that consistent water coming from one unit. And the unit's very efficient, so we're talking producing one gallon of pure water for every uh, gallon of waste. So that is about as efficient as it can get. Because RO has, unfortunately, a bad reputation. And back in the day, uh, you, to get one gallon of pure water, you used to throw away four, five, even six gallons of water. So much more efficient water usage. Way more efficient, and that's the thing. So it's, today, we're not gonna use less water, but if we can conserve it, uh, we're gonna waste less. I think that's the whole premise yeah. today. And so when we make that one-to-one -one ratio, that one gallon of pure reverse osmosis water for consuming, mm -hmm. we're losing that one gallon, but what, is there any way to salvage it? Can we still use it? Sure, so we have a concentrated version, right, of the constituents that are in the water. And it has some, uh, some, a little bit of viscosity, but yes, so there's a lot of builders now and or even commercial facilities like your retail stores, when the water uh, goes to the drain, they essentially send it to another holding tank with they pressure that and they send that water to uh, your, uh, your flower beds or the landscaping or whatever the case may be. And they're also using it for the toilets to actually mm. bring that water back. So that's almost like gray water. They'll send it back to the toilets uh, or whatever is general uses that you're not going to consume or put on your skin. Right. It makes it very simple. So we are softening, we're filtering, we're making this water, this one perfect delicious thing. Right. But I also know that there's always side effects. Sure. With everything. So right. what, can you talk a little bit about that? So. RO water, uh -huh. uh, in the industry we call it aggressive water. And Ooh. really water in its most natural state is a natural solvent. So it's gonna absorb anything it touches, it's a universal solvent, that's why we use it to clean, cook, and so forth. Well, here's the side effect. So if we're gonna use RO water in any sort of beverage or culinary experience, you gotta make sure that the fixtures that the water's going to, number one, are NSF certified, okay. they're, uh, they're certified to not leach, right, the materials, including lead, so there's a, lot of, there's a lot of fixtures out there that have lead in them. So when RO water, again, is that pure and it's going through a fixture, we have to make sure that the fixtures are not uh, dissolvable or the contaminating water. the water, exactly. This better water, does it change anything culinary-wise, like a higher altitude? My parents have been in the restaurant business for 34 years, so if we're using clean water, we have to salt it, the, the foods less, we season them less, right? So your pastas, your teas, your coffees, uh, your juices, rice beans, whatever the case may be. So, because when water has a lot of constituents in it, the smell bads, the look yeah. bad, so we have to flavor over those. We have to flavor right? over. So in this case, what we're doing is not having the flavor over them uh, and just using basic uh, amounts of ingredients. So, 
I'm excited to trust my water. I'm excited to have control <laughs> sure. with my water. And I'm excited to have a little bell and whistle. Oh, Shall we tell everybody? This is going to be pretty neat. So <laughs> we have partnered with Growy, and Growy is going to be uh, providing us a uh, sparkling water system. Now, this yeah. thing is pretty cool. So it's going to be, you're going to have a, a smart faucet. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to have three functions on it. Okay. So the first function is ambient water. That's Got pure. Uh, and we're going to have uh, sparkling water that's semi-chilled. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have uh, really that, that high-end, real like Topo Chico style sparkling water where you get a lot of carbonation, you get a lot of minerals. Yeah. And it's all coming out of one faucet with three different functions. Wow. And yeah, so that's the fun part. So that is just the tip of the iceberg of our water system. And we will obviously come back with install videos and show you more about this. Please like, subscribe, and comment below if you're curious and want to learn more about this. Tune in next time.